Hey, hey, party people. Today, this is kind of like a mashup video. I'm not even sure what to title it at this point. This is book recommendations, product recommendations, because I haven't done either type of video in a very long time. It's also going to be your holiday gift guide for 2023. And listen, the last time I did a holiday gift guide, everyone was like, oh, I just, I'm just going to get somebody a gift card. I know you don't need me to help you get a gift card. I made the video for people who didn't want to get a gift card or give cash or whatever. Listen, I'm with you. I like cash, whatever. But the whole video, the whole point was to offer things that were not cash or gift cards. So please do not drop any comments being like, I'm just going to do gift cards. That's great. I bet that's amazing for whoever's going to receive it. Thank you. <laughs> anyway. If you are interested in buying me a gift, then you should go get my croaky sketchbook because that's money for me and that's a nice gift for you. It's a win-win. And if you don't want to buy it, you can put it on your holiday gift list and have someone else buy it. So it's a win-win-win. Someone gets you a gift, you receive the gift, I get money. Win-win-win. Okay? I love it. All right. Moving on. I did a call out for recommendations and y'all wrote in the comments what you want me, what category of thing, books mostly, uh, that you wanted me to recommend. So here we are. My table is covered in books for this video and in no particular order, uh, books on fashion design. Okay. There are a lot of books out there and they tell you things like, well, first you need a mood board and first you need, and then you need to figure out a color story. And that's great because I'm writing a, a fashion design book right now and I will definitely tell you, you need to pick out a color story. But for learning fashion design, this one is my favorite because it's so geeky. And you know, I am of a mind like this because if you have been watching my design principles for fashion series, then you know how geeky I love to get about fashion design. And this book, Fashion by Design by Janice Greenberg Ellenwood, is really great. And this person also goes over the elements of, or they go over the elements and principles of design by principle, by element, as it relates to fashion design. And of course, they write about a lot of other subjects related to fashion design as well. But it's a very geeky book. I mean, it is text heavy, but also very picture example heavy. And this is my favorite so far in terms of just the breadth of knowledge and geekery about design. And if you know me, then geekery is a compliment. Being a geek is a compliment coming from me. I respect geeks. I respect people who like just deep dive into a subject and get really knowledgeable about it. So that is a compliment. Trust. Okay. But this is my favorite fashion design book, probably until I write my book. <laughs> And you're like, when is that? I don't know. Let me get back to you. Side note, let me just explain to you how much I love books, okay? You see this? On screen, you're not even seeing my whole, my, there's bookcases down here. The ones on the very bottom are books I don't recommend to anybody. I can't throw away books, I don't know how. They're all down here. I don't want people to know I own them, okay? Um, Non-fashion books are like in two cubbies, like way over there. <laughs> But let me explain to you how much I love books. All right, last night I had this dream. I had this dream that somehow I got involved in a cult, which is very unlike me, but whatever, okay? I got involved in a cult and I had packed up my most precious belongings and ended up in this building with all the other people in this cult, right? And this guy, the leader of the cult, was going around and marking people's foreheads and saying, you have been marked for death and you've been marked for death. And I see these marks on your forehead because I've been given the sight to see and you know, you have all been marked for death. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna die. Later on, the cult leader comes up to me and says, in my dream, the cult leader comes up to me and says, hey, look at this book. I want this book. You know, you're gonna die tomorrow anyway. Can I have this book? And he takes the book. Fast forward in the dream, I'm like, it's like someone stealing a book of mine snapped me out of this trance where I was believing in this cult. And I'm like, do you know the only people who can predict death? Killers. Okay? What is happening here? Get me out of here. I steal the book back. 
and then I wake up. I don't even remember what book it was, but I really loved it. And this guy tried to steal it. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Is this witch about to kill me for my book? I mean, that was something I would do. Kidding, kidding. All this is a dream, but that is really my personality. I find that hilarious. Anyway, next on the list, uh, costume design books for filmmaking. This is not an area of my expertise, so I cannot answer this question. And those of you who are new to me, if I don't know something, I don't talk about it. I do not like to blow sunshine up anybody's book. Creative pattern making books. Okay, so this is different from just like regular pattern making. I have a lot of pattern making books. All right, so I do have book recommendations on my Amazon page. They It may be updated with these or not. But listen, Amazon just has a really convenient feature where I can just list my recommendations. It is an affiliate link, so I do make some money, teeny tiny bit. But if you don't want to use my link, it's fine. If you want to look at my link and go buy these books elsewhere, that's fine because, you know, I kind of have like a love-hate relationship with Amazon. Any, it's more like a like-hate relationship with Amazon. But if you want to go to bookshop.org or abooks.com where you can buy used and new books that are cheaper, you're supporting independent bookstores, go do that. Go do that. All right? But, oh, uh, where was it? Creative, <laughs> creative pattern making. I am very, very caffeinated. So these are Japanese pattern making books and two of them are in Japanese, but I, okay, this is Pattern Magic and there's volume one and two and uh, they're in Japanese and I bought them anyway because I thought that I could figure this out because there's a ton of diagrams, minimal text, lots of numbers. Um, I know they're in the metric system. I don't care. Like, when I teach my pattern making class on Patreon, I use both Imperial and metric system to teach the class. So I'm not like the most knowledgeable about metric system, but I can dig it, you know? And so I bought them. Did I ever make anything out of them? No, because I was so busy running my company and then teaching and then doing this channel. <laughs> this is cool. If you are in my pattern making class on Patreon and you want to learn one of these like insane, creative, gorgeous designs. Now that we are on the bodice section of our pattern making class, drop me a note, drop me a note or DM me on Patreon. Now, given that this one is in English, this one is for stretch fabrics, big old now in English sticker, which may mean that the older volumes are also in English. Maybe I'm gonna go look and leave a note on the screen. I'm gonna go look, but I mean, these are so fun looking. Look at those. Look at those. They look like there's like an invisible thread pulling at them. They're not, okay? But anyway, this pattern making book is in English. And this is very cool. Look at this one in the back. Uh, let's see. The author's name is Tomoko Nakamichi. Okay, that I can read in English. Let me explain something to you about people who are absurd level lovers of books, particularly in a specific given category, like myself. We don't always buy books because we think we're it's the best book in this category and it's we're gonna read the whole thing front to back, okay? A lot of the time it's reference. So when someone asks me a sewing question, I don't know, I'm gonna go look through my sewing books to see if I can find the answer to help them. So they're reference. Also, I buy books and I discover that only five pages are really resourceful and the rest is kind of like eh. And so I don't recommend them, but I do keep them for those five pages. Also, there are plenty of books I read and there are too many random mistakes and so I don't end up recommending them. So the existence of all these books in my library doesn't actually mean I recommend all of them. So if you can read any of the titles in any of my videos, don't assume like, oh, Zoe loves that book. That whole thing must be bomb, okay? It, that's not it. Books with advanced draping techniques. Oh, this one. Oh, 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 oh. Where are you? This is Advanced Creative Draping by Carolyn Cassell. And uh, I hope I am pronouncing her name correctly. Now, if you buy her books, so she has a beginner one, like a basics one, which I also own and have 
recommended before. I think that her instructions and her pictures and, uh, and things are really great. And not only that, but she has a QR code in here where it will take you to a private locked Vimeo page full of video tutorials, but you can only access the code if you have the book. Okay. And no, I'm not going to share it because I want Carolyn to get all her dollars. She's a nice lady. She had a book launch party with an alpaca. She had alpacas at her launch party. We were DMing on Instagram. It was delightful. Anyway. Um, now I'm not recommending her book because I think she's a nice person. I, you know, we started chatting because I was, I respected her book so much. And then, uh, she was like, let me send you a free copy of my next book. And I'm like, uh, lady, I already bought it because I loved your first book so much. <laughs> so this one is great. Her first book is great too. If you're looking for a beginner basic straping book. Printmaking techniques. Again, printmaking is not an area of expertise for me. And so I cannot speak to that. Uh, colors and fashion illustration for a beginner. This is Designing with Color, Concepts and Applications by Chris Dorosh and uh, J.R. Watson. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that first last name right. I used to teach with J.R. Not in the same classroom. Like we, he headed the color department at the university I taught at. He is a co-writer for this book. This is the textbook that I taught with in the color classes that I taught at university in the same department as him. And this is a really great book. And this is, it's because there's so much really good practical application for color theory and design principles in this book with a ton of examples that are, it's not specific to the fashion, but there are many fashion examples in there. There's fashion, there's graphic design, there's architecture, like applied design, you know, where you see the color interact in the design and not a bunch of theory based on color chips. Okay. Now I have nothing against the color chips books and I am going to start teaching color theory next month on my Patreon at the fashion design and illustration tier. And we are going to start with color chips because it's important. It's important for you to look at color, to mix color, to see, you know, what colors go into making of other colors and how neutrals are created and how you can um, put neutrals and colors together and make them work based on their undertones. And you need to know all those things. So I have nothing against the color chip books. Okay. But if you're, there's a lot of those out there. This one is really about design application and that's why I really love this book. Someone once told me that this book is out of print and now the remaining copies are in the triple digits, like 134 US dollars or something. Um, <laughs> my recommendation is if you can't afford that and would prefer more practical hands-on that you join my color theory class on Patreon next month, or you can start off by watching my color theory and design principles videos here on my channel to get you started. And then fashion illustration, again, I, I'm a little bit all over the place, you know, uh, Draw Fashion Now by Danielle Mater is uh, a good one. This one is also good. This is fashion drawing illustration techniques for fashion designers. And this is by Michelle Weston Bryant. It is a hundred pounds, like <laughs> not in the dollar amount, but like, but it has a ton of info. Um, do I think everything is necessary for designers? Not really. Okay. There's a lot of stuff here that is also just like for just pure fashion illustration. And so if you're someone who's really interested in illustration techniques, as well as just like communicating design, this one is also a good book for those, you know, for you, you know, children, young adults, figure drawing, um, drawing clothes on bodies, it's a very big tone, okay? But um, again, this is my best recommendation until I write my book. <laughs> don't ask me when that is. I don't know either. I'm working on it. I'm trying, okay? I don't know if you know, but um, I got distracted this year uh, with some stuff. Books on pattern making. Okay. I have pattern making books on my Amazon bookstore uh, recommendations list. Here's the thing is there is no one pattern making book that I love. 
Like some people were really specific and they're like, we need something that gives instructions very explicitly. I need something that has like the teacher's notes in it. I need more instruction than these pattern making books provide. And you know what? Same. Same. Because I have many pattern making books. And for the pa uh, the pattern making class I have on my Patreon, like I will plan, like I make a lesson plan with all the different kinds of styles that I want to do. And I will refer to various pattern books to figure out the easiest, best way to teach how to do this kind of bodice and this kind of skirt. And uh, because they're all over the place. So I'm constantly referencing these books and then just sort of like putting them all in a funnel and then creating tutorial videos for my Patreon students. So if that's what you're looking for, then go join my pattern making Patreon. All right. But there is no book that I think is really good at explicitly explaining patterns to beginners on a level that I would appreciate. Okay. And so I don't have one where I'm like, this is the one. There are a lot of good ones. Helen Joseph Armstrong, Connie Crawford. Like there's a lot of good ones. Is there one where I'm like, this is the gold standard. So far of all the ones I have read, there is not. Okay, but I am always buying pattern making books. Okay, look at this. This is my latest acquisition and I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am about it. Look at this. It's all about pockets. And if you know me at all, <laughs> you know how much I love pockets. So this is pattern making and construction, sewing, everything about pockets. It's just about pockets, but it's everything about pockets. And I am obsessed. Can I recommend this book? I don't know yet. I literally received it yesterday and I have been busy, like, you know, working, trying to make this video. And so I have not had a chance to, you know, do a deep dive, look at things, kind of construct things in my mind and see if the instructions make sense. Like I have not had a chance to do that, but listen, it is a whole book on pockets. Side note, do you know how hard it is for me to refrain from cursing when I'm this level of caffeinated? Oh my God. I'm always looking up more construction, more pattern making books. Listen, Here's a call out. If a pattern making a book writer or someone who has like really like beyond me level pattern making skills wants to team up with me because I I'm an I'm a good pattern maker. I'm not an expert pattern maker, so I don't feel like I can write a pattern making book, but I am an expert level explainer. If I can do anything well, it's explain things. And I think a lot of you can agree with me on that. OK. And so if a pattern making teacher slash pattern maker slash book writer wanted to collab with me on a book where I help them express the instructions for patterns better while they did actually the mechanics of pattern making, I would be so into that. I would be so into writing a book like that. I have so many uh, students that I would help putting better instruction on things where once I unravel things like, oh, the pattern makes total sense. You just forgot to add X, Y, Z things. Okay. So anyway, where was I? Where was I? Garment fitting, garment fitting. This is, this is fast fit, easy pattern alterations for every figure by Sandra Bettina, host of HGTV's So Perfect. Okay. I have not seen this show, but whatever. The thing about this book that I like, it's so well organized. It just says, if you have a forward thrusting neck, this is, if this is your problem, they describe the problem, and then here's the solution. And then using commercial patterns, they show you the pattern correction, how they did it. Here's one where, okay, you need more butt. How about this correction? Okay. <laughs> they call it protruding derriere. I honestly think a lot of us would prefer a protruding derriere, but whatever. So if you have a protruding derriere, you can try this option, this option, this option. Like it's organized by body part garment section and how to, you know, identify the problem. And then the pattern corrections are right there. Like I love a well-organized book like this. This is the one I recommend fast fit identifying fabrics. Um, if you have spent any time with me on this channel, you already know my answer. It is the Fabric for Fashion, The Swatch Book by Clive Hallett and Amanda Johnston. And 
There is nothing that is going to teach fabric better than having literal swatches that are labeled correctly and you just feel them and you remember what it's called. Like, that's the whole point of identifying fabrics. Is there every fabric under the sun in here? Of course not. Do you know how many fabrics exist in the world? There's no possible way. Are there many, 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 many swatches in here and you are gonna learn so much from this? Absolutely, this is always, when I'm talking to designers, okay, whether they're costume designers or fashion designers, anybody who's making soft goods, okay, and that's anything made out of fabric, this is my number one book that I recommend to them. Costume designers need to know about fabrics. You know, if you watch my interview with Shirley Zakovich, who is a costume designer and tailor, she says all the time, I need interns who understand fabric. Fashion designers need to know fabric. You know, even if you're making teddy bears, you should know about fabric, okay? Uh, pillows, linens, all that stuff. This is the best one. There is a book where it's just the text. You need to get the one that says the swatch book, the swatch book with the swatches. This is the best one. I love this book. I have the older one, the yellow one, and now I had to, it's, it, it, this is like many years old, so I had to splurge and get this new updated pink one. I love it so much. Uh, different types of fabric manipulations. This is The Art of Manipulating Fabric by Colette Wolf, and it just goes over a million different kinds of pleats and tucks and ruffles and flounces and smocking diagrams, pictures of muslin samples, quilting, just so much. This is a great book too. Books about pattern grading, that is also not my area of expertise. Okay, uh, la, 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 la. technical drawing. This is the spec manual by Michelle Wesson Bryan and Diane Demers. Demers, I, sorry for butchering that, okay? Uh, Michelle Weston Bryan also wrote that fashion drawing book, but this one, I have a couple of books on tech design, okay? This is not my favorite book on tech design. My, this is actually my favorite book on tech design. This is Complete Guide to Size, Specification, and Technical Design by Paula J. Myers McDivitt, okay? This is actually my favorite. I think there's a newer edition out now also, but this one is so full of information, and it has uh, example tech packs, it has flats, it has how to measure, it has grade rules, all this sort of thing, right? But in terms of how the flats are drawn, and this person wanted a technical drawing book, the, the flats in here are very good. It's hard to flip through because it has a CD-ROM. That's how old this book is. But the flats drawn in here are really good. And what I like about it is also be, what these arrows are, are where you need to measure for your tech pack, which is also good. Like the other book also has that too, but these flats are very good. So this is a really good, so it's not like a how to draw. Um, you're gonna get that with Adobe Illustrator instructions. There's some on my channel also, but this is how certain flats should look. Fashion freelancing, fashion marketing, fashion trend forecasting. These are really not my areas of expertise. However, my tip is to buy a book that's really as recent as possible. The most recent book is not going to be the best book, but a fairly recent book is going to be a better bet than something written in 2006. I mean, do you know how much the fashion world has changed since 2006? I dare say even anything written before the pandemic at this point is, I don't want to say useless, but really outdated. Okay, because the pandemic has really changed how we do business, um, not just in fashion, but just in every sector of consumerism. And so you got to look for something recent. I have a lot of really older books just because I have so many old books, but you got to get one that's really recent. You know, people sometimes people leave me these comments like, well, Ralph Lauren started his career this way. And I'm like, um, goody for him. I have a lot of respect for how he for his whole empire and how he built it. However, the world is different now. And so the way Alaya did things, you know, people say things like, well, these people didn't go to fashion school. And there is a career path for everyone. But comparing how, how things worked in the 70s and how things work now, it is 
not an accurate representation and it's not an accurate guide to help you. Maybe some books on famous designers. Honestly, just like go look up your favorite designer and um, and try to find books on them. That's what I do. I don't really like try to look for like if someone didn't like a book, I read the reviews and I'm like, oh, there wasn't enough pictures. Well, no, I want lots of pictures, you know, something like that. But just go look up your favorite designers. Other than that, I personally, you know what I like is I like to get museum catalogs of specific exhibits. This one is one of my dead favorites. Okay. This is the museum catalog for the Manus X Machina show at the Met a few years ago. And these pictures are to die. They are to die. Oh, I love it so much. I saw this in person. I saw the show in person. I almost got kicked out of the museum. <laughs> I've done this a few times. Okay. If I ever get kicked out of I haven't yet. I have been given stern words and side eye from many a museum security guard. Uh, sometimes I get a little too close. Like I'm so obsessed with a particular garment and I'm just like, okay. And the security guard's like, whoa, hey, what you doing there? Stop breathing. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then one time, and then in this particular circumstance, you know, I get a little bit uh, excited about fashion. I don't know if you knew that. Okay. I get a little excited about fashion. And when I do, I get a little... Um, I get a little didactic, I guess, is the word for it. And I start going off about it. And I was with, at the time, I was with one of my friends who isn't like knowledgeable in fashion that they didn't study it like I do, but they had an interest in fashion. So of course they wanted to go see the show with me. And I just kind of started rambling, not in a talking down way. I hope, at least I hope not, but just in a way where like, do you see this? This is from this designer who did this. And then I remember reading like, this was this, and then that was that. And this was this time period and this collection. And I was like kind of talking about the show. And I guess I got a, a little bit excited and then a teeny tiny bit loud. And uh, people were following me around. The museum. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a docent. What do you, what do you guys want? And one of the security guards was kind of like, um, what is this unofficial group happening? <laughs> Although one time I was at the Met and I was with that same friend. And later on, he told me that a security guard had approached him because he thought that my friend, he thought that he was security for me because he thought I was Margaret Cho. Anyway, books on how to make corsets, old school and modern types. Listen, I don't. I have a book. I have a couple of books and I don't know how good they are yet because here's the thing. I have them and I'm going to start looking at some more corset books because I'm going to start posting more content on Patreon for my free and $2 a month level patrons. So you should really go join me over there. Okay. If you're interested in the shenanigans I get up to on Patreon uh, because I'm going to start making a corset. In the new year, I'm going to design a corset and I'm going to drape it on my trusty mannequin over there, dress form, and I'm going to build a corset from scratch. And there will be a lot of fumbling around. There will be a lot of new, like, you know, new things that I will be learning too. Um, but it should be a good time over there. So yeah, you should join me over on Patreon. So let's move on to product recommendations. I've been talking about books for a long time. So number one, this person wanted white pens, pencils, markers for drawing and sketching on black paper. Okay. So markers not going to show up, but you're going to want something that's more like acrylic-y. So paint pens are going to be your best bet. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with paint pens, so I don't have a brand where I'm like, oh, this is the one. But I've tried a few of these. These are fun. I normally try them to get like a brighter white when I want to do sequins, sparkles, sparkle crosses, any of that sort of thing. So you're going to want paint pens. And for as for a white colored pencil, I have discovered through much experimentation that the Prismacolor, the Prismacolor white is the most potent white in terms of colored pencil. Now, this one is the Derwent Inktense Watercolor Pencil, which is 
really bright. If you are 100% sure water is not going to touch this, then go ahead and use that. This one is a pastel. So it's chalkier, it's messier than colored pencil, but it is quite vibrant. I don't really like gel pens, but this one, this one, the Sakura Jelly Roll gel pen is pretty good. You know, charcoal pencil, General's charcoal pencil, the Fiber Castell Pastel. These are all really the Derwent. Oh, the Derwent Color Soft pencil is also pretty uh, white, white. The Derwent Graphitint is also pretty white, white, but that one is also messy and harder to find. Okay, I've only ever seen it in a couple of stores. Maybe they're more common in England. I think Derwent is an English brand. You know what's a really great marker to use on black paper are metallics. So metallics like these that I have here from Tombow um, or these that from Sharpie. Finally, let's talk about sewing stuff. And these are really questions I get just a lot, all the time, all over the place here on Patreon, randomly on Instagram, whatever. Okay. So number one, sewing machines, which sewing machine should I get? And I am team industrial versus home machine. Okay. I've had my industrial for many years. I learned how to sew on an industrial. I don't have a ton of experience on home machines, but I know that industrials are not a practical solution for everyone. First of all, you have to be kind of living in one place for a while because it is a solid piece of furniture. And so it can be cumbersome, especially if you're a student and you're like in and out of dorms, going back home for the holiday, like that kind of thing all the time. I get that. Um, but if you are someplace where you're going to be living there for a while, you have the space for a solid chunk of furniture and you know you are invested in sewing a lot in the future, then go ahead and get a, an industrial, get a Juki 87, what is it? Juki DDL 8700, a single needle lock stitch. That's kind of your regular, you know, single line of thread stitching, regular sewing machine. And it will do 101 things. I have never purchased a home machine. Uh, there was a period of time where a friend had one in her garage and, lo and gave it to me for a while. And then once I got my industrial, I passed that home machine on to someone else who could use it, and uh, I don't even remember who has it anymore. But here are some tips on how to pick a home sewing machine that's right for you. Number one, read the reviews, and I want you to actually read them. Don't just look at the rating and be like, oh, it's rated high. Read the reviews. What you're looking for is reviews like, I bought this for my 15-year-old nephew and he wanted to learn how to sew, so I bought this for him for his birthday and he said it was so easy to get started and he just loves it and he sews all the time. Okay, that kind of thing, right? Because people who have been sewing for a long time, they can make do with pretty much any machine. They can make it work because they have been sewing for a long time and that's their experience, okay? By the time I got my friend's old busted home sewing machine, I already knew how to sew pretty well. And so I just kind of, you automatically do your workarounds without even thinking about it, okay? But you wanna hear from people who purchased it for themselves as a beginner or purchased it for someone else as a beginner and Oh, it was easy to start up, to get the hang of, it was intuitive, there weren't any weird things, and it was solid, and I have been enjoying getting to learn how to sew on this machine. Like, those are the kinds of reviews you want to read. Like, I've only been sewing for a year, this is really good, like, that, that kind of thing, okay? And the next thing is, do not buy an overexpensive machine, because I promise you, a huge chunk of you will be too scared to break your machine to actually just start cranking on it. Okay, you want something that's a little, you know, under your budget so that you do not feel bad about just trying stuff out. I'm not saying abuse your machine and put in seven layers of vinyl through it at one go. Okay, that's the point of the industrial. The industrial, like it does a lot of like layers and tough fabrics and leather and you know, that kind of thing. And you know, home sewing machines, many of them, especially newer ones, they can't handle that much workload, but you should be able to crank out a lot of like, you know, four or five layers of cotton poplin, make aprons, like shirtings, dress weights, and just go with it, you know? Um, and so get something like a lot of the time, 
If you get something that's a little too expensive and you're afraid to break it, you won't use it. Okay. Um, I have learned this I've heard stories like this in the YouTube space a lot, like getting to know other video content creators at like conferences and stuff. They'll tell me like, oh yeah, you know, I was doing everything on my iPhone and then my husband was trying to be super supportive and he bought me this in amazing DSLR and it took me a year to start using it because I was always afraid to break it. And yeah, don't, don't be like that. And kudos to the husband who was trying to be supportive and got her fancy stuff. That's amazing. But seriously, like get something where you're just going to, and then by the time you've cranked through that machine and you've gotten really comfortable, you can move on. You'll have more knowledge as to what you personally need, depending on the kinds of things that you like to sew, you know, whether you need something that's more durable for heavier fabrics, et cetera, et cetera. Number two, FAQ, what kind of dress form should I get? Number one, a uh, brand of dress form that I recommend that even I don't have because I can't afford it is an Alva form. Okay. And they are very expensive. You can find used ones on eBay and they are also like the really good, like good condition ones. They are also still quite expensive. Uh, <laughs> but they are the ones that most closely resemble real bodies. So if that is important to you, save up, invest. Um, mine is a PGM. Take care of your stuff. They'll last you. I swear, and I have no proof of this, but I swear Wolf must have some sort of contract with all the fashion schools in the world. Cause every fashion school I've ever, uh, went to taught at, visited have wool forms and are they that much better than any other dress form no i don't see anything particularly special um i'm sure they're very durable because they've been through generations of fashion students but it's not like alva where alva really makes things like the shape of everything like really human like so if you see an alva and a wolf that are similar in price just go for the alva absolutely anytime. So there are other brands out there, but you know, and you're like, well, Zoe, how am I supposed to afford that? Here's what I did when I was turning 30 and I needed an overlock machine for my business. Um, one of my good friends who knew I wanted an overlock and they were at the time on Craigslist for about $600. And so she instigated this whole pool with my friends and they all chipped in here and there and they cut me a $600 check and they're like, go buy your overlock. So instead of asking for, you know, everyone to buy you a little of this and a little of that, if you are really wanting a dress form or a machine or similar big ticket item, there are all those websites, right? Like usually they're for couples who are getting married and they want you to pitch into a honeymoon fund or a house buying fund, which is kind of cute instead of like random toasters and stuff. Um, nothing against buying a toaster. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying. Okay. But yeah, like start a website where I'm like, I really want a dress form so that I can continue with my studies or become a better dressmaker or et cetera, et cetera. Please help me. And people can pitch in to your dress form fund, your sewing machine fund, whatever that is. Okay. That's how I would do it. But in terms of smaller gifts or things like a beautiful pair of fabric scissors is a great gift. My preference is Kai. These are 11 inch Kai's. And um, when you measure scissors, you measure them tip to tip and not the blade. So these are not 11 inch blades. They're 11 inches, the whole thing. If you are looking for a stocking stuffer for the sewing person in your life, I cannot recommend more than a bunch of bobbins. Now, if you also know how to sew and you can fill in these bobbins, like wind the bobbins with thread, that's even better. Okay. Like a lot of sewers, they probably need plenty of these in like white and black. I recently posted in one of my favorite Facebook groups that it's like, why is it always when you're on deadline that you run out of pre-wound bobbins? In the comments, raise your hand if this has happened to you if you have been a victim of this crime. Now do keep in mind that home machines and industrial sewing machines have different bobbins. I'm fairly certain that all home machines have one particular size bobbin and all industrials have one particular size of bobbin, but I use an industrial. These are the bobbins I use, whatever. Best stocking stuffer idea that I could ever come up with, okay? I, now I need to go and wind 20 more bobbins so that I can do some little 
sewing sample things for my pattern making class. We don't sew in there, but I do muslin fitting in there. So I do sew up muslins for my, pa my Patreon class so we can fit them on a dress form, stuff like that. All right, and that's it, okay? Uh, if you have more questions about specific product recommendations, book recommendations, drop them in the comments below. You know, if you're interested in a color class or in pattern making, come join us on Patreon. We would love to have you. The Patreon, the pattern making class has been going on for a long time. That does not mean you cannot join it, okay? You are welcome to join at any point in time. All my classes are self-paced, right? Is that enough babbling? Oh my God. I had so much coffee today. I can't, I, I, I can't even keep track of how much coffee I had today. As usual, please like this video if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe, all the ways you show me love. Go buy my sketchbook, please, please, please. And I will see you in the next video.